Yeah. Boom. <laughs> so these are the bands. This isn't a bait this time. And Gragas is banned away. They don't want World 6 on that. And now all of a sudden on red sides, yeah. just a heck of a lot of bands being thrown at Crystal over there. You see the Callista, you see the Draven. I think the Vici know what is coming, that they're going to get a hyper carry in the bottom lane. Yeah, so Callista Draven taken away from Crystal. Vici recognize that. They've stricken Alistar's Mata as well. They've got 10 seconds for that last pick. Hecarim still on the board. Fizz, Echo, Rise. Azir. And Azir. Azir will be the one that goes here. I think that that forces... Oh, they actually go with Siva. Yeah, looks like they take that away from Endless. Yeah, so right now, on the side of Vici, you can leave the Rise available and grab yourself something like an Azir Hecarim because they can't take both of them off the board and see if you can just run them over with two priority picks versus one. Yeah, so we'll see what Vici decide to leave up. Again, still that Rise, Echo, still available. I'm kind of looking forward to see what they're going to be throwing out this time. Hatong did very well in the previous game on that victor, and it is the Azir ban with Rise left open. Boom, Instalock. Yeah, Instalock coming through there, and that's a little bit surprising that they went with Azir. Maybe Snake actually prioritizes Azir over Rise, and they, uh, Vici knows something, but they do get the Hecarim. They get Rek'Sai as well. So going to see Beast, whether he picks up something. That, yeah. Maybe a Nunu, maybe, probably Sejuani going to come yeah. out this game. Sejuani's still open. Yeah. Um, it's unlikely that we're going to see him go for a, a Scion like last time. It worked reasonably well, but it just Nidalee. wasn't... Yeah, he plays Nidalee very well. Carry. Yeah, looking at the Nidalee currently. Um, but Vici, going, putting Dandy on that Hecker. And that's something he's played time and time again, not only in the jungle, but also in the top lane. And he's found great success with it. Yeah, it's been his most impressive top laner. Definitely going to come up against Flandre's Rise, which is very strong on current patch. So we'll see whether they opt for a lane swap here, get him out of that. He lane swaps really well, Danny. Jungle follows like a jungler, nearly. <laughs> Able to take, pick himself up some camps. Hecarim, of course, farms a jungle incredibly well. Not to mention with something like a Rek'Sai, both AoE clearers, so they do it really on point. And we'll see whether they can get him to a point of the game where he has enough farm to start taking over. He played the game against RNG as a really good anti-carry. On the other side, Woosh was playing Vayne, I believe, when uh, Danny was on Hecarim. He was able to really chunk him out in the last couple of team fights, make mm. sure he was on the prior Mary target, which is why I thought Snake would ban it, because that's how they kind of treat Crystal. He's normally on a priority AD carry, and we'll see whether Danny can play a similar role in this game and really try and be that big anti-carry and take Crystal off the map. Yeah, we'll definitely keep a track on Dandy if he is able to get on Crystal, and that's something that you were just pointing out right there, because Crystal would be going for that hyper carry role, though LeBlanc still open. Same thing with Varus. I like use LeBlanc. He's played it before, and while in the past he hasn't had great results, he's really climbed the rankings with it. Varus also being hovered. Yeah, Snake are playing another window timed comp right now. They've got like Rod of Ages, Trinity Force, like Jungle Item plus Tier on Nidalee, and then they're hoping to siege up turrets yet again, but they're so squishy. If Dandy gets to any like three items, game is going to be incredibly difficult to win for Snake right now. They've got a Rek'Sai, Jinx, they've got a Hecarim. They add the threat of a LeBlanc against double AD carry here with a very squishy jungler. Any form of assassin, really. And this is going to be, after 25 minutes, difficult to pull off. Yeah, we can see Vici with a very strong go button composition. They've got Mata's Annie locked in as well for some serious amounts of CC. And with Endless on Jinx, seems like that's going to round the whole wow. composition out. Yeah, Hatong on Lulu. Yeah, that surprises me a little bit because, you know, we talk about assassins. Like, I don't know, like, Patri Time loves to talk about Yasuo, the theoretical Yasuo in a comp like this. Like, because there's Corky and uh, Varus that get yep. shut down by it so much. Zed can delete one of those off the map really quickly, force QSSs to come out. Same kind of idea with a LeBlanc. You saw Hatong hover it, but doesn't go for it. Goes with the Lulu going to augment. I guess Jinx's damage very well in the late game, give the speed up, makes Jinx much more of a threat earlier in the game than probably would be. And we'll have to see whether it works out for them. Yeah, we definitely will. It's going to be Dandy versus Flandre on the top once again as we're preparing for game number two. Flandre taking the rise, and he's been creative in the past. We'll have to see if he's able to do it again this time against Dandy's Hecarim. Now it's Beast and World in the jungle. Beast going to be on the Hyper Carry Nidalee and World 6 on the tanky Rek'Sai with you and Tatong in the mid. Yeah, two 
champions it brings. Straight line wave clear once again. So it's going to be Barris, kind of the better version of Jace right now, you would have to say. Mm. Corky versus uh, Jinx in the bottom lane. Corky going to add to that poke composition coming through. And, you know, that's really what they've gone for. You saw the Thresh as well. He's a great addition to the poke comp. They've got Nidalee. They've got Barris. They've got Corky. This is a straight up poke comp that's coming through but no disengage. Something like a Maokai would have fit so much better into this composition than a Ryze. You feel like they took it just because it is a strong pick right now, not for what it is going to add to this composition. Although Q's a little bit longer now. I don't know, maybe yeah. you can make a case for Ryze. Just, just a bit. I mean, he is incredibly he does everything. effective right now. And Snake, they tried it in game number one. I'm curious to see if they're going to be able to pull it off in game number two with the timed poke composition. We are now loading onto the Rift. Don't go anywhere, we're getting in. We're in! Yeah! I hope you didn't go anywhere. <laughs> because we're on the rift. It's game number two between Snake and Vici. You can already see a bit of a five-man group from Snake on the top side. They might catch Dandy out of position. He looks to trade Who's with Quadro, but yeah, Vici might be the ones who have caught Snake. Could be a potential collapse as it is five versus five. Everyone's grouped around. Some early poke coming out. Flash burn from you, that's really yeah. important. World Six going to be able to impact mid lane, you feel now, because you Varus is real slow. Yeah. Like, I mean, he crawls around the map without boots. <laughs> and now you have an incredibly potent jungler like Rek'Sai that's going to be able to repetitively visit mid lane. I'm expecting a lane swap to unlock Mata to roam up there as well. Level 1 can just W the Varus, and that's going to be the cleanse gone as well. So a lot of pressure now on Snake to be able to get some deep vision of what Vici are doing. Yeah, lots of wards being dropped so far. Snake have got control over their blue side jungle, but it looks like Vici have got their eyes set on the red side. Oh. They're setting up a death bush here. Oh, if they could find someone, this would no, be huge. No, they found someone. They have indeed. Beast is going to walk right in. Four members find him. The AoE comes out. Ignite is ticking. It's first blood onto Endless of all people. Yeah, they perfectly hand it over. All of a sudden, another member falls down. Sorry, that was the first. You didn't die. He just burned all his flashes. Yeah. Snake, they get a freeze, but 400 gold already onto the AD carry and a couple of assists to boot means that's a very happy VT gaming lineup. Oh, yeah. You talked a little bit about how they would be looking for, or how Snake would be looking for that poke for the siege and would have difficulty with disengage. And that's exactly what we saw at level one. Question is, will it be a repeating theme throughout the game as we've got oh. another death push set up? Yeah, but he knows this time because his duo is on the top side of the map, so they're expecting him to go up top lane. Oh, they're going remember, for the dive instead. Yeah, Yu doesn't have flash, tosses out the AoE for slow, and they're just going to get some free damage onto the mid tier one. More importantly, they're just zoning you away from experience, away from, uh, away from gold, so smart move coming through there. This is dangerous though. World 6, what are you doing on the top side of the jungle? Yeah, a little bit of a scary position for World 6 as the rest of Snake clear away his red buff. He decides to back off and stay safe following Dandy around the jungle. See, I don't know whether World 6 was scared because you wouldn't go there if you knew people were there. So maybe he was just oblivious. <laughs> well, is it really that much more worse? Because there could have been people there. It was like Schrodinger's team. Yeah, exactly. There they were there people until there. they weren't. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Unfortunately, unlike a radioactive cat, this is a team that will kill you. Oh, so exactly. So like a radioactive cat, like Beast on Nidalee. Stretch, <laughs> what made him radioactive? I just heard the cameraman chuckle. <laughs> Yes, so we are loading in, or we're into the game. We can see the siege happening from Vici on the bottom. We just reloaded as well. I this know. game's going to next level. This is ridiculous. You see the fast push coming <laughs> through is what I think we're trying to say. Nidalee, of Those course, great words. in fast pushes because of her heal. Just gives some attack speed through there. Proxy is coming through, and Dragon's a response. Yep, textbook response out of Vici Gaming as they go for that first. Dragon, they're going to be able to secure this nice and fast while Hatong oh. continues harassing you down. Knowing there's no flash, you has got to play so defensive. And Hatong, he might have lethal because he does have Ignite. Yeah, and uh, Cleanse is available, though, so yeah. Ignite not, not really going to mean too much, but they're going to go for another roam, you feel, after this Dragon goes down. Although, World 6 very low. Yeah. Wow, Snake recognized they can't win the turret race, so they just swap back regardless, but I think the turret's going to go down. 
just might. Minions are getting there to clear it out. They should lose this bottom tier one. Endless and Mata should just run to, uh, oh, so close. top lane straight away. After they take this turret, just, they want nothing to do with the 2v2 right now because it guarantees Ryze at 1v1, which is why Snake wanted to swap back because Ryze should be able to bully the Hecarim. But right now, all they have to do is swap their bottom lane back, but they're not going to do it. They're going to stay down. Yeah, it seems like Dandy is rushing to the top lane to catch that CS, so he should be opting for that. Ping's going down now from the rest of VG on the bottom side to stay in the tri bush, play it nice and safe. They've got some deep wards to spot Beast on that side of the map as well. So, so far, things have been slowing down just a little bit. So they and, got the uh, first yeah. rag and they got the first turret, which is really good movement out of VG Gaming. They're yep. behind a shop in the bottom lane, so they need to play a little bit carefully. But Snake invested a lot to try and get Flandre his 1v1. So now I'm a lot of pressure on Flandre because they gave up the ability to trade that turret, pretty much five, 600 gold this early in the game, to guarantee Flandre his one-on-one -on -one lane. Yeah, World 6 on the invade steals away the large direwolf camp. and Really smart to smite that one, by the way, if you're invading. Just gives you vision of that part of the map. That's what you want to be doing. Ooh. Dandy doing what you do as Hecarim in the top lane when you're in a losing matchup, and that is repetitively shove into the turret and recall, but they're going for a dive, maybe. Yeah, they were setting up for it. Dandy was at reasonably low health, however, and with World 6 in position, he instead is just going to steal away the Gromp camp with the sides. He can't quite take that, as he knows there's a lot of damage on that early Beast Nidalee. And yeah, Beast secures it. So Beast being able to pick that one up just means that he's a little bit ahead in the jungle right now, uh, level-wise. Of course, he did get first-blooded, but that went over Endless. And Endless is actually behind in CS, because when he shoved in the turret, wasn't really watching for that too much. And you see Crystal on Corky going to peak naturally a little bit quicker, not to mention the fact that Trinity Force is a standalone item. It's just so much better than Infinity Edge. So Endless probably needs to just farm safely right now. Yeah, that's what we can see him doing as he's shoving this wave up. Knowing that that Tier 1 is gone, he can get a little bit more pressure onto Crystal. And we'll see where he decides to go after clearing that out. Recall coming out from Mata as well. Whereas Snake and Ella look for a few deep wards themselves. And synchronized Recall, no. Seems like Endless and Mata want to stay on the bottom. They might look for a pick with a flash stun, but Crystal's playing super defensively. Yeah, so Crystal with Corky just going to be able to force for a spawn as soon as he gets that ultimate farm from range. He's not really too concerned. They need to get Flandre ahead right now because, as I said, they invested a turret into getting this guy the 1v1 lane. But currently he hasn't got a tier. It's already seven minutes into the game. That's longer than you want to go with Ryze not stacking up that tier. And Dandy not having any problem at all farming up. Yeah, he's got a lot of regeneration, taking some big damage. Flandre accidentally takes a turret hit, but Ryze is able to prevent that with a shield. Here's the swing from VJ. They decide to put their 2v1 into Flandre. Yeah, not surprised about this whatsoever. Everyone now up on the top side of the map. There's going to be no way they can respond in time. Flandre is going to have to give up a second turret of the game, and this is what happens when you search for a 1v1 lane. It means that you have to play reactionary. Yeah, potential dive being set up for Flandre. His wave is staggered just a little bit. Endless and Dandy are there. They're going to make it under the turret and just shred through this thing. So yeah, all of a sudden, that is a jinx with a BF sword on a turret with the rest of the team there. Going to be able to take this one down. And you see the freeze in the bottom lane not being advanced by, uh, sorry, Crystal. So they're just going to let a second turret of the game fall. So that begs the question about this poke composition from Snake. What if they don't have the items to do enough damage when they poke? They lose. Oh, well, I guess there's that. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they outright lose this game. If they don't get to item thresholds, like, uh, as I mentioned, it's the Magus as well as some mana coming through on uh, Beast. Trinity Force, and then uh, in the mid lane, it's going to be more mana and uh, exactly the same as what yeah, Jace, Jace wanted last game. The Brutalizer, cooldown reduction boots to get to the CDR. And they don't get to that, they're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, Blue Steel is going to be secured. It's turned Whoa. into a full fight as Vici bring it to Snake and just shred through their health bars. Two members, no, one member has died, and they did steal the blue. Great poke finds World 6. The CC chain finds Hatong, but they get the blue and they get out. Yeah, and Flandre and Crystal are like, Guys, just farm. Like, <laughs> let's get the items we want before we start trying to pick fights with a Hecarim. And that hard engage just meant that Endless gets even more gold. And we mentioned, oh, 
even catches a wave down the bottom. Dandy's so far ahead. Yeah, he did use the home guard teleport, and we talked about how effective he would be if he would, would be able to get to the three items. Well, he's at one. Boots with home guard, and we've already seen how effective he can be. Yeah, exactly right. And this is the thing about Hecarim, just uh, movement speed augments his kit so much, so that's going to be a very real threat. Beachy, they've picked up a dragon for themselves as well. In every metric you can measure, including team comp, Beachy is currently ahead of Snake. They are doing very solid right now. Dragon's now up in 30 seconds. They've got Dandy on that side of the map, and Endless and Mata with their early the recall. Beast. Yeah. They look like they're preparing for a Beast. Going for the blue steel isn't going to succeed. I think Dandy just smited that and took it away from Beast. Yeah, he did, but once again, Beast needs to be careful. Dandy's two levels higher than him. Ooh, good save from Ella to get Beast out of there. Yes, you will have vision of that dragon going down, but good luck contesting it as Vici are so far ahead right now. Yeah, so you see Snake, they've kind of put the massive brakes on. They're trying to freeze out multiple lanes, making sure that they can farm up. Even Beast, who's only level five right now at 10 minutes into the game, is just struggling. And methodically, Endless is just ripping the structures apart. See the mid-tier one is taking a lot of damage. Death sentence from Ella goes wide, more of a zoning death sentence because I don't think he wanted to have gone into that very scary Jinx Annie. Now, they do have teleport advantage right now. Flandre is on the top side of the map. Maybe they can get something going, although they are just going to give up Dragon. Yeah, Dragon has spawned with all five members of Vici on this side of the map. They secure that no problem. And it seems like Vici, after having a rough start to game number one, clean up all of those weaknesses, all of those problems now in game number two. This might be their first 2-0 series in the LPL. Yeah, it was a perfect level one that came through that really set all of this up. They got the deep wards they were looking for. They reversed onto the other side of the map, caught Beast out, set his jungle very far behind, hasn't really recovered, but they are going in. Ooh, Death Sentence goes wide. They had Flandre on the bottom side of the map as well, but isn't able to capitalize on it. and. This is looking so great for Vici. They are very strong after that early level one. Their early game is very, very solid. Two and a half thousand gold right now. And I'm, I'm really looking forward and to seeing And look at this. Beast just wants experience. He's like, I cannot farm my own jungle because Dandy keeps taking it away from me. I'm really low level. So can I just hang out with you for a bit? <laughs> He's trying. Spear finds a tongue. So he is a little bit effective in the mid lane. But the push continues. Mata now there and World 6 coming in from the side. Dive. Dandy's showing himself as well. Are they going to look for you? He's got, he doesn't have his flash back up. The dive finds Mata and World 6 tanks enough damage. He goes down. This mid tier 1 is going to follow shortly thereafter as all five members of Vici are in the mid lane. Yeah, the tier 1 goes down and Vici satisfied with their pick back away. Yeah, and they get another pick. They get another objective. 3,000, 3,500 golds now. They'll leave it only 12 minutes in. They've got two dragons at this point in the game as well. 50 CS on their AD carry. I Honestly, Vici are just really... Oh, no, actually, that's Crystal 50 CS up. So Crystal farming well, and he's got his Trinity Force, but realistically, Vici are exactly where they want to be in this game. They probably couldn't have hoped for a better early game. Yeah, well, what, what can Snake do to try turning this around? They have been trying to look for picks, but they just can't find them. So they need to keep rising to solo lane, keep absorbing experience as they're doing. And the other four members have really small item thresholds. So they just need to make sure that they get the Trinity Force, get cooldown reduction boots, Nexus Flandre is in a lot of trouble. Ooh, he takes some big damage here. Flandre does get a shield to try to keep himself alive. Oh. There's the death, uh, Dark Passage. Goodness gracious me. Ella. Rise is really strong in the current patch. Yeah, he's um, doing some big damage. Yeah, so what they need to do, like with the Trinity Force, get some boots too coming through there onto uh, the Corky Magic Pen preferably. Get some uh, cooldown reduction boots onto your Varus. Make sure that they are the ones that are setting up around structures and then force some space for Flandre to go to work. He right now is your late game carrier on this team and he needs to be in there as a teleport's coming in. Yeah, it looks like Dandy wants to fight. The home guard comes in, he dodges it and then looks like he can't quite make up his mind. It's skill shot City as Snake are able to zone away the team fight for this blue. And Vici do get the blue, but so much was blown to prevent Vici from taking any lives on top of it. Yeah, so they are able to get in and out there. They tried to steal the blue away. They did steal the blue away. That went across onto Hatong. So in the end, net profit there. Keeping it off the Varus is very important to stop the Siege coming through right now. And Snake are 
they're in a bad situation. They need to just continue <laughs> to shove up, keep farming as the best of their ability. As I said, they've got lower item thresholds, so less gold makes them better in the game. But Vici right now, they're just very far ahead. There. We'll definitely see if they are able to hit those smaller item thresholds. That was the first time that Snake were able to successfully disengage from Vici and avoid being slaughtered by the incredible power spikes of Vici from that early uh, lead that they have. Now the next big objective looks like it's going to be a tier two. Dragon's going to be coming up in about two minutes. Flandre continuing to solo farm, but Dandy is everywhere that Flandre is. He's catching every minion that Flandre is putting out. Yeah, so in the end, they're just trading experience from a Ryze onto a Hecarim, which is, you know, Ryze is incredibly strong late game. Hecarim's also really strong, so one team doesn't necessarily come out ahead in this, although with two AD carries, you expect Hecarim to do work in the late game as that tanky member. Ooh, so Snake going to be happy with that. Finally, Beast gets to absorb some CS. He's really low level still. Yeah, only level 8 to the level 8 of World 6 which is even, but he is not doing as much work as World 6 is. You can see how effective 1-0 oh, and 2 for Vici. He's been involved with every fight, as so far Vici have been grouping immaculately. We saw them try grouping down on the bottom side just now. They weren't able to siege that Tier 2 as they didn't want to try contesting Flaudre's Rise. Dragon's now up in a minute. The neural network for World 6 is online. He's got tunnels all over the map. Dandy doesn't have teleport. But he is going to continue split pushing on the top side. Let's see if he decides to recall and join up, join up with his team because Dragon 3 is probably a little bit important to a rotation focused team. Yeah, it certainly is. That's, that's the next objective that's going to come through from Vici. They want the third Dragon. Snake probably still not in any area to be able to contest this. See, cooldown reduction boots weren't prioritized. More mana going to be finished up quite soon for you. So he's trying to stack that one nice and quickly. But they just don't have the tools right now to be able to get in there. Apart from the Corky, who's completely fine because there's still 50 CS up. Everyone else is just significantly weaker than their counterpart. Yeah, we can certainly see that. Oh, some good damage finds World 6, but he soaks it just fine as he did opt for the early Aegis. And Poke doesn't find Mata. Now Dragon's up in four seconds. You've got Dandy continuing to split push. Teleport advantage for Flandre. I'm curious to see if they will try to contest this because they know they've got that teleport advantage. Yeah, but the real worry is that he teleports and then Dandy just takes a tier two for a first Dragon, which is yeah. once again still in Beachy's favor. They want to continue to build their gold lead, get in there and make sure... That oh, a oh. flash stun finds you. He insta-cleanses to get out of there. Good the ultimate. CC lock finds Tibbers in the front, and Endless is just dishing out so much damage. He assassinates Crystal as he's going over the wall. Mata is traded over for that favor, but Dandy on the backside was able to zone away. Now the big damage is still available for Snake. Can Vici do this, Dragon? Yeah, so we talked about Corky being the important member. They traded the Corky for the Annie. So there's no way right now that Snake can fight. Endless the only member that's low. They don't want anything to do with this, although they're going in. Yeah, it's a thousand health now left on that dragon. It's secured by Vici Gaming. They're actually going to back away as Snake continue putting some more forward pressure out there, just going to clear out some vestigial wards. They get the inside lane. They might be able to pick up a mid turret for this, although Vici now looking to see if they can get back in position. Yeah, the only person who recalled was Dandy. He's got Home Guard and Mata's back on the map as well. They could try to get some damage onto this Tier 1 and trade that Dragon Probably too over. risky. Use out of mana. You see, Flandre, he does some damage at this point of the game, but they will just disengage. Yeah, here comes Mata from the side as well, even dropping the Sweeper to make sure nothing's going to happen. Ping's now going on to the top lane as Mata and Dandy head their way over. They could look for some free damage onto the top Tier 2. Hatong looks like he's even going to swing up with them too. Yeah, so Vici Gaming, they pick up the third Dragon of the game. Both top and bottom are also pushing in their favor. So more CS and I guess ultimately Golden Experience denied from the Snake lineup. And things just getting worse and worse as this game continues on. You see, 19 minutes into the game, Rod of Age is not completed for Ryze. He's got his boots to instead because he was looking for immediate power. He's still not going to be able to pick it up. So that's going to be a 23-ish minute Rod of Ages, most likely, which just means that like 30 minutes into the game is when Ryze going to hit any form of a stride. It's just time is running out with this Jinx that's getting stronger and stronger. It's a complete reversal of roles. From game number one, it was Vici who had to wait to the mid game or to the late game and get endless rolling and they're going to get some great damage onto this tier two mata with the flank 
makes sure that uh, Flandre has to be careful. They chunk down about a third of the turret's health and then back away. Yeah, so Flandre tried to act imposing as his team was coming, but realistically three members yeah. of each were just there. The recall is going to finish Zeal for Endless. You can see an Etherwisp picked up by Hatong. We'll see if he goes for the Lich Bane or Ludens. Should be very entertaining as Dandy looks for a bit of an invade himself, possibly trying to steal away a camp as he is on the top side of the map. Nope, just continuing to keep that top side deported. Yeah, and he just doesn't want to be the, near the minion wave right now because he's finished up that Barmy Cinder and the wave's pushing. Make sure it kills as much CS as possible before he continues to shove it back. So just denying of even more resources coming through for the top laner of Vici. Yeah, things seem to be going very well for Vici Gaming. They're getting closer and closer to victory. Their first 2-0 this split it could be against Snake, who is tied for third place in the standings right now, which would be excellent for Vici. But so far, things have slowed down just a little bit as Snake are successfully mani managing to hold the tide of Vici at bay. Dragon's not going to be up for another few minutes. Baron has just spawned. Vici going for the five-man invade to the red side jungle. They get some D ports, but Snake are starting to be able to contest them. Yeah, so Snake right now, because of the efficiencies of their build, feel like they can at least shove them away a little bit. Crystal's still relatively going well in CS at the least, and they do have that poke comp coming together. So they're going to try and siege up wherever they can. Vici, however, they're just refusing to play that game. They're moving around the map where Snake isn't and just trying to get positional advantage. We can see that the wards have been pretty effectively cleared out for Snake, so they do have some more vision over their own side of the jungle. Dandy with the recall. He's going to head back to that top lane once again to catch any sort of CS, and Endless will receive this bottom wave as well, unfortunately missing both of those minions. Yeah, that was weird CSing technique. Yeah. I think he, he expected them to go down. They were both at the same health, but he attacked the first one, and it came to like 10 HP. And he was like, like oh, I'll, uh -huh. I'll get the second. I'll get the crit. Yeah. Good players crit more often. Didn't and he get didn't it. get the He's crit. got an IE and a zeal, and he didn't crit on either of them. Yeah. So IE is only like 25%. Yeah. I guess that's appropriate. Yeah. Because there were two minions. So out of 100, well, that's a map I don't want to get into. Yeah, no, neither do I. Yeah. <laughs> you can see Flandre is going to clear out this wave from Dandy. Flandre has actually been doing a good job. He finally finishes Flandre's off that Flandre is actually really ages. strong right now. Yeah. It's weird how Rise works. <laughs> He's going to get a little bit stronger, and then I actually don't know whether Rise falls off or not. I think Luden Echo Rise does because he's not solid enough, but they might try and get an engagement here. We can see Vici are setting up to prepare for that Rise. They've got Mata, they've got World, they've got Endless up there. They are giving some serious respect to him. We'll see if he is spotted out. Nope, he sees Endless on top of the Scuttle Crab and Mata as well and says, you know what, I'm going to be defensive and intelligent. Yeah, so Snake are actually doing a great job of stalling this game out. They're starting to get a lot of CS onto Flandre, who we've time and time again have pointed to as being the guy that can rescue them this game, get them back in. And you know, right now, Snake are probably because of the Trinity Force and going into the Cutlass, and now double uh, armor pen item is going to come through from Varus quite shortly, as well as Ryze just being able to stack mana, which is a very cost-efficient stat. Not in a bad position this game. They've got some good, good poke damage to set up potentially around this next dragon. Yeah, dragon's up in 30 seconds. There's they not don't want to start it, wards. that's for sure. They just want to poke. Yeah. Off of that poke, maybe they can find a pick. Beast has completed his mages. He's looking for his own staff of the Seraphim as that tier continues to stack. So far, things seem to be looking a little bit brighter for Snake as they've made it away from that scary early spike from Vici Gaming. Oh man, World 6 just jumped into the enemy team. Dandy's in the top lane farming, but World 6 really cutting it close there. Yeah, he tried to get any position. Wow, well, Mata gets chunked Ooh. out as well. This is what their team comp does well, and that is repetitively spam out Varus Qs and Nidalee Spears see a lot of those long-range abilities just shredding through the minions. All it takes is Dandy's home guard teleport. You can see him sitting back in base, just waiting for that opening. Dragon's up. Snake have got vision. This is what's always beaten Poke. Very hard engage, and teleport Hecarim is one of those things with those home guard boots. 
As soon as they go any further, they will get engaged on. Oh, the flash stun finds you. Teleport not yet activated for Dandy. There's the ultimate being blown as well, but Dandy is now in the fight. Hatong uses the AoE onto Dandy to try to give him more and more health. He's in the back line. Does he do enough damage? Endless has been removed. Both Hatong, Endless, and Mata are dead. Dandy trying to get through Crystal, but the kiting is so effective for Snake. But Dandy, wow. three items doing such a great job. He's going for pure health, doesn't have quite enough. And World 6 is the only survivor. That was two for four in favor of Snake. Yeah, so Snake able to use these item advantages just because they peak so much earlier coming through here and get a lot of work done. They pick up their first dragon of the game, stop that objective from coming through. Might even grab a turret. And overall, that was like a 2,000 gold swing just because Snake fought at the right time. Yeah, and with that, they secure that first dragon. They take that turret. Here's the breakdown of the fight. Yeah, so Mata goes in, gets someone that can instantly cleanse and flash. Dandy's on the back line. Gets a lot of work done, but right now, they're just splitting their focus too much. Endless can't really chunk through anyone. Dandy continuing to dive that back line, and right here is where the fight turns. Yu gets a lot of burst damage coming through there. The Phosphorus Bomb hits as well. They chunk out Endless, who was the last consistent high damage threat. Dandy does his best to run away with the fight, but World 6, he's already exited stage right. Maybe if they <laughs> paired up and did something a little bit more cohesive, they could have got somewhere. But in the end, just one team fight came through for Snake. And just like that, things have evened out just a little bit for Snake as they're now hitting some of those stronger breakpoints. Well, Last this is where they're at their strongest. This is yeah. where they were always going to be at their strongest. Some mana on their top laner and jungler, 10 items, Blade of the Ruined King done for their support. They've got the zone control that can come out of Thresh. Right now, they need to be able to siege up under turrets. But you see, Hatong, he has another idea. He's just going to split push and see what he can get away with. Yeah, he's on the bottom tier 2 turret and getting some pretty solid damage onto it. Flandre is going to be there to catch it. You can see the Zap finding you as the poke is traded. And Hatong gets the bottom tier 2. And you see, they didn't group up in the mid lane, so they haven't been able to respond to anything. Flandre has a teleport advantage. We'll be able to maybe match top lane with the Hecarim Dandy, of course. Going towards a Frozen Heart next up will be incredibly tanky. Might not be duelable right now for Flandre, but he's going to be able to shove the wave at least. But they just cannot siege in here for some reason, Snake. Finally, Dandy continues to shove in the top lane while the rest of Snake group in the mid looking for that poke battle. But they're creeping forward inch by inch to make sure that they are safe. They do not want to get picked off by a Dandy teleport from the side or World 6 coming in for a knockup. And they've done a much better job of warding their flanks this time. You see that you, there's not really any way for Dandy to be able to get in there. They saw that one coming as well because of some good vision. But they're just not comfortable warding, uh, taking this one out. Ooh, Vici looks like he still wants a fight. Yu's going to be the primary target. He's CC locked and is destroyed. Crystal trying to shred through the back line. And that's Dandy who gets away. Mata now is in the front line. But he seems like Vici are going to continue uh, escaping from this fight after picking that kill on you. Yeah, and you saw that they were able to get a pick, then they disengage, and they know now that the siege is broken. There's no way that Snake can move back up this mid lane. So once again, just getting a good team fight there for VTU, backing away. Palandre, unfortunately, hit some chompers, wasn't able to get into that back line and start wreaking some havoc. But this is when they should be strong, Snake. They just can't get anything going in their favor. We can see the gold lead is now in Beachy's favor. They're up by about 4,000, and they've been rather effective with their group plays. You can see full kill participation on Dandy, World 6, Endless, and Mata are very close. Hatong also at 6. So a lot of Beachy's plays have been built around grouping, making sure that they get those solid team fights, dives, and uh, snowballs off of the early kills and beast. They're trying to prevent it just by placing wards all over the map, but the lack of a sight stone on uh, Beast is starting to hinder them a bit. Yeah, so they they committed a lot. They had double pink wards on their left side, wanted to be able to collapse up that side, but that's where Dandy was. But you can see now they finally set up for a pretty big siege, and they'll grab this turret. Yeah, finally they're able to take it down, but World 6 Dandy's looks like he wants to again. trade for it. The knockup finds you once again. AoE stun finds Ella. He takes a lot of damage from the Mega Inferno Bomb. And just so much damage coming across. The snare finds Endless as Flandre is able to burst him down. He gets two kills for his effort, but at what cost? Four members of his team are dead. Yeah, this is legitimately Endless versus Dandy. Who can zone more effectively on the back line? That time around, Dandy won. He chased four people off. 
And he's still going for the fifth. Yeah, they find Crystal. This could be the ace if they kill him. Valkyrie is available. He takes the Onslaught of Shadows. Now's the time to use it, Crystal. Challenging Smite plus Flash Stun. Crystal's at such low health. He tries to kill Mata, but ends up going down. It's an ace for Vici Gaming. Yeah, so Vici come out ahead. Two kills went over to F Flandre, but not much else going to be achieved. On Snake's side, they only really lost a fight, so it's about a thousand gold bonus over to Vici. Not going to lose any turrets because it's still relatively early in the game. And wow, a QSS has been picked up by Flandre. He got polymorphed in that last fight, and it really did hurt his ability to be able to get all the damage down as early as possible. So, a strange adaptation, but I actually like it. Uh, another interesting adaptation is Hatong. Whoa. He flashed it. It was the Magi's, for those of you who did see it, but decided, you know what, that's maybe a little bit too much, and swapped it over for a Blasting Wand. The very last second, you can see, is getting a little bit more and AP, wow. and the Baron is being started up by Snake here. Dandy's got Teleport. He's going to be coming in from the back side. Snake now looking for the flank as they might be caught out. It. Dandy's in the back. Beast takes so much, he dodges the Super Mega Death Rocket. Ella gets shredded by the damage from Hatong. He goes down endless with the reset, chases forward, but Beast and Crystal are kiting from the back side. They're getting some good damage onto Dandy. They secure a blue buff, and so far, they have only lost one member for their transgression. Yeah, so the support fell down. Ella not able to join the fight for another 30 seconds, and we'll see whether Vici make them pay for it at all. No, Snake successfully repels her. Once again, only one kill, but you can see the problem. Dandy, three items now completed, is a nightmare to try and... Oh, he runs in and dives on the Flandre. He's actually caught on the other side of his team. World 6 coming for some chase, and Dandy gets another kill. Dandy's unkillable. He won't die. <laughs> He's doing some serious work. Lots of poke coming across from both you, Beast, and Crystal, but it just isn't enough to keep the turret standing. Finally, the tier two falls. Yeah, and no tank lineup means that Dandy and World 6 are just running around having a field day. They don't, they can hit anyone because bruises excel against squishies. They just got two bruises against five squishies. <laughs> yeah, the team composition for Snake not working against them. Now, Dragon is being secured for Vici. This is number four. The threat of number five <laughs> They're going back is to now up. Wait, Ella looking to clear some wards around. They're like, we can do it, guys. This is our hope. <laughs> oh, Beast, he hopped right next to the bush, but didn't go into it to clear out that pink ward. So close, yet so far. Yeah, so Ryze actually does Baron really quickly. That's something else to mention, especially when he gets all that cooldown back up through getting the five stacks. He just throws lots of things at Baron and makes it very grumpy. But <laughs> right now, the potential threatening of Dandy on the back line is just way too much. Four, one, and nine. 13 out of 14 kills. With that Frozen Heart, with the Spirit Bazooza as well. He's just going to trot, canter, gallop. I have no other horse <laughs> movement all over them. <laughs> He's going to leap over the enemy team. Onslaught? Do horses leap? I don't think I mean, they leap. Horses can leap. Have you ever seen a horse jump over a fence? Have you seen any action movie ever? But was that a leap? I would call it a leap. What would you call it? I don't know. I want to know. I mean, it doesn't Dressage? plow through it. Well, dressage is the art of uh, leaping? dictating the horse. <laughs> <laughs> the art of leaping, yes. <laughs> On horse. <laughs> Brought to you by the Ministry of Silly Walks, the new Ministry of Leaping. Okay, so VG are shoving up now in the mid lane. All five members are grouped up. Finally, they seem content to put pressure on the snake, but the poke is still so strong. Yeah, but they can just continue to farm up. They haven't got a Trinity Force yet on Dandy at that point. That He's probably a critical mass. We'll go towards something like a Ranguance. The Tong is on split pushing duty. He mentioned already that he went with that Luden's Echo, so he's got incredible wave clear. Deathcap going to follow. Then probably, wow, they're going in. Yeah, it looks like Snake won a fight. They saw Hitong on the bottom side they of the map. They just really wanted to clear that ward. Oh my gosh, they, they were weren't like, able to oh, find it. That ward, give me it. And there's that one too. Oh, come on. Yeah, Crystal gets it. But Dandy, he's still sitting on the ward. That beast missed. He's going to watch the replay of this game and face palm so hard. He was right next to the bush. He was right there. <laughs> Couldn't have been farther. If it was a snake, it would have been him. Really? Yeah. Snakes don't like vibrations. Snake would have like not gone anywhere near. Well, I mean, snake don't like vibrations very much. 
They're getting a bit upset by Vici, who are coming in very strong as they get onto the Baron now. Teleport being used by Flandre, as it looks like Vici are going to try shredding through. They should be able to get it. It's not Aww. stolen, secured instead by Dandy. They turn now. The stun finds Crystal. Mata is tanking up in the front line. They managed to kill Beast, who did go into the pit. Mata getting into the front. A great flash knockup, and the Super Mega Death Rocket picks up the kill for Endless. Dandy is going to chase down the remaining survivors of Snake. He turns now onto the Tier 2, but with Baron buff, Vici should have this. Yeah, they certainly should. Going to be able to push in, at least break the base. 34 minutes in, death timers are still quite short, so Snake might be able to respawn to repel the Nexus push. But this game is very close to being over. Yeah. It's only a matter of time. five-man push looking to take down the Nexus turrets. One goes down. Dandy is being tanked up by that other turret. Endless doing what he can, but he's just not quite able to do it and Vici decide to play it safe. Yeah, no, they were definitely right call came through there. Everyone going to be back up on this side of Snake, but Vici now with an insurmountable lead, 11,000 gold in their favor. They're going to go back and pick up anything they would like out of the store. You see Trinity Force nearly finished, Death Cap finished up, Bloodthirster and QSS for Endless coming through right now. And across the board, they just so much stronger than their counterpart. <laughs> yeah, they're really having a very great game after that early snowball and two excellent drafting phases. Vici look like they're set to take the first 2-0 of the LPL this split. They've split one-on-one -on -one with so many teams, but Dandy leading the charge, Endless hot on his heels. This has been phenomenal play from Vici Gaming. With that recall, they invade into the jungle of Snake. With Baron buff, looks like they should be setting up a siege here. There's still a lot of poke from Snake, but at they this don't point, have to siege. they can just straight up dive. Yeah, it's just not doing enough damage to the front line. They got the Vici. Lulu ultimate onto Dandy. He can just get in there whenever he wants. Yeah, they get onto the turret. The dive looks like it's set up. Dandy tries to rush in, but instead just dodges skill shots instead. The inhibitor goes down. Watch for the onslaught of shadows. That's going to be. I don't even think they're going to pull the trigger. They're just going to no. walk back into the mid lane now and do the exact same thing. Great play coming Fifth out of Fifth Dragon's Vici. up in a minute. Vici have everything at their beck and call on the map right now. What are they going to call? I have no idea. Um, Ghostbusters? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, the ghost of Snake is putting up a bit of a fight, covering them in goo. Is it? I don't know if yeah. Snake's putting up a fight anymore. <laughs> All right, now we're mixing metaphors. <laughs> Yeah, but Vici are looking to end this game in a very strong showing. There's the last recall. They should just shove down mid and take that last in hit. Yeah, so you see they're going to go for fifth dragon. It's up in 30 seconds. Oh, yeah, they dragon. secured control over that part of the map. Void Staff going to come out next for Hatong, so not going for that. Flandre's caught dandy. And he's taking some big damage. The double snare will trade away some of his health, but I don't think you want to have Hecarim recall at this point because with Home Guard teleport, he's going to get right onto the back line. You can see the rush coming out from Mata as he drops the Righteous Glory. They don't find anyone. But again, just putting pressure on this side of the map. They know that Dragon's up. Dandy teleporting in with the Lightning Horse. Dragon's number five about to be secured unless Snake can steal it. Yeah, so they've got Flandre in the base. He's not going to be able to teleport in because it's not available, and Beast is Ooh. in trouble. Yeah, forced to take the Dark Passage out. Ella was already preempting that. Vici are now on the Dragon. They should be able to secure it here. We'll see if there is a steal. Nope. Vici take Dragon number five after securing the Baron with the two bottom, uh, bottom and top inhibitors done. They look for the last one still in, and Vici are just going to end this nice and textbook. Yeah, so one thing I will point out is Flandre's Rise build. Kind of like it. He goes for a little bit tankiness with some AP in there with the Abyssal, Crystal Scepter. Something like, I don't know, if he hadn't gone QSS, I would say something like uh, Zonya's Into Void stuff would be really good because it gives you some pseudo tanky stats, gets you to be able to do rounds of spells. But this game, just going to be fifth Dragon Vici rolling into the last base turret. Yeah, the base turret goes down. The inhibitor soon to follow. A hook finds Dandy. He's actually taking a lot of damage, but the hook, unfortunately, pulls him out of the chains from you. And with Dandy at low health, they decide to back away. They don't want to trade it over. World 6 deciding Krugs are more important than the enemy Nexus, as the inhibitors are going to continue being shoved down. And Vici opt for one final recall before they end this. Yeah, so they're going to go back get any item they want right now. 
see if they can push in one last time. But the longer this game goes, the more likely Snake could pull off an upset. Of course, the longer yeah. the game goes, the more irrelevant gold does get. They are a lot of gold behind, 10,000 still. But they're seeing if they can make a miracle happen. Yeah. Snake are still hanging on to that last hope. They do have Flandre. He's level 17. He's got an Beast enormous got the amount of gold. Yep. Beast yep. did get the smite seal. We're done. Yep. That's it. Well, it's six the retreats. He is now ashamed. Yeah. I mean, when you can't clear the enemy's jungle, then what, what, what's what the point anymore? Yep. Yeah, so that's the Bear Inhibitor. Baron's up in another minute and a half. There still is Dragon 5. No, I believe it actually ended up falling off. And no, it's still actually there for about a minute and a half for Vici. So they should be diving and ending this, but they're just taking their time. Yeah, and you see Five Stacker Eyes. He's acting intimidating at the front. See whether he goes for it. Yeah, we'll definitely keep an eye on Flandre. Crystal trying to poke it out. This is going to be the last inhibitor finally going down. Yes, the minions secure it, but Vici are giving so much respect to Snake with the end of this game. And it is the Zonia's Hourglass coming through last for Flandre. I like this build. That is one positive I'm taking away from this match. Yeah, Flandre is still a good player. Yeah, the effective health that comes through from Roa as well as the Seraphs because it gives you a shield. You've got some MR, you've got some armor. If you end it on something like a Void Staff, you've got good penetration as well. Thumbs up, Flandre. I think this is the Rise build I've been waiting for. Nice. And it would be Flandre who comes up with it. He is that creative top laner that we all look to, as he did uh, really popularize the Smite teleport. Now, Baron is up in 20 seconds. Vision control rests securely for Vici. Dandy looks to set up a bit of a split push as he steals away the red camp, while the rest of his team should be able to shred through this Baron. However, the top inhibitor has respawned. There is a small window of opportunity for Snake. Yeah, they, they can shove up mid and see if they can go contest it. Definitely a viable option coming through. They're probably going to leave Flandre into the bottom lane because he's got the teleport instead. They send everyone bottom lane, and VG is just going to grab a dragon. Yeah, that's Baron. This is Baron number two for VG Gaming. Their dragon number five has now fallen off, so this is going to be the Baron that they use for the last siege, and hopefully this is going to be the one that breaks the base. Yeah, we'll see whether they can make it happen. It certainly has drawn out to the point where Snake are relatively strong in their own right. Very threatening now. Nearly an Infinity Edge finished up on Crystal as well. 0, 2, and 7, but nearly 100 CS up 80 odd on Endless right now. Mm -hmm. See whether they can get anything done. Yeah, Crystal CS this game has actually been rather phenomenal. He's not fallen too far behind. In fact, he does have that CS lead. So he is still very relevant in terms of Mata damage. Goes again. Yeah, the righteous Zoning. glory. He can't decide on the target that he wants. Dandy looking for the flank on the other side. As that mid inhibitor is down. The flash stun finds Beast. He gets shredded through Zanyas to try to keep himself alive. But Dandy should be able to bring him low. It's World 6 who gets the kill. The inhibitor has fallen. Now there's only one turret on the entire map. Four <laughs> snakes still alive. They just need to bring that down. Endless taking so much poke, but he's got such a big overshield that it doesn't he even moves matter. So quick as well. Yeah, all three of the inhibitors are now down. Minions are flooding into the oh, base. Now it's turned into like one of those annoying turret defense games. <laughs> yeah, the skill shots are coming out left, right, and center. Dandy gets snared. The hook goes wide, but Dandy doesn't care. He dives into the back line. You is deleted. Flandre goes down. Ella's still alive, but it doesn't matter. Crystal's going to die here. They're going to chase Crystal instead of end the game. It's picked up by uh, Dandy. Finally, the Nexus turret goes down, and for the first time in the LPL, this split. Vici Gaming